Well, I'm here, and I'm at the top of the world <laughs> in, with our buddy Tim Gray. Is uh, in fact, you were on the podcast last August. Oh, okay. It was, it, was that I looked it up. Going on a year. So now. It's been going on. It's been a far year. too long. And at that point in time, I threatened. <laughs> That I was going to go right. on the Palouse workshop. You did warn me. And see, I fulfilled with my threats. And so, here we are. So we're here in the Palouse. And this, you want to tell a little bit about the area and your workshop? Because this is great. Sure. I really recommend that you look this up. I'm going to put the links down in here to Tim's workshop. You do this once a year, correct? Every June, usually two workshop ses sessions back to back in the Palouse. It's funny. The first time I came out here, I thought I'd come out here once and be done with it. That was 10 years ago. 10 right? years ago because I had no idea. And usually I talk to photographers, hey, have you ever been to the Palouse? And the, the question that they, I get in response is, what's a Palouse? That was my question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then you come out here and, you know, I've got a pretty short attention span, but somehow 10 years, we've, I've spent three to four weeks every year for the last 10 years out here and it never gets old. I mean, the landscape is just phenomenal. You think of a wheat field and it's just a straight line, right? But out here, the hills are steep and incredible and they're loaded with crops, with wheat and with, uh, we got garbanzo beans and lentils. There's a, this year, a ton of canola, lots and lots of canola, which is Somebody beautiful. described this as the bread basket with, I guess, all the, the wheat and uh, the barley. Yep. Was, some was barley, a lot of grown. wheat. Uh, canola, to some extent. This year, more canola than usual, just because we've got an issue with some weeds. And, yeah, garbanzo beans, they're real known for their lentils. And it's just remarkable. It's a stunning landscape, and it's unique in that it's still family farms. And this was a homestead area, so in the mid-1800s, families came out here, got their parcel of land, built a house, and some of those houses are still here. And we've got farmers who are fourth and fifth generation who are still working the family farm. And so to get to know the people, and it's one of the things that's really great coming out here so many years in a row that I've gotten to know a lot of the locals. So, you know, tomorrow night, in fact, we're going to a barbecue, crop duster buddy we're, of mine. Well, we had the crop duster today. Right. Amazing. This is incredible. Yeah, so we're able to coordinate with him so that we can safely photograph him uh, flying, spraying the fields. And, of course, he knows everybody out here. So we're inviting some farmers, and we're going to take our group of photographers and go have a barbecue. So it's, you know, one of the great things about being out here so much, getting to know the locals, and then getting ingrained. You know, not just coming through the area, taking pictures and leaving, but actually getting to know the locals and getting to be a, a part of the community on some level. And it's a wonderful opportunity for you know our guests, for example, to ask questions to the farmers. Over the years, I've gotten reasonably familiar. I can identify most of the crops. I can explain a fair bit about what's going on. Uh, for example, a lot of people are surprised there's no irrigation out here. It's all rainfall. They get, depending on the area, around about 20 inches of rain a year. And so I've got some of these nuggets, but the farmers know a heck of a lot more. And so to be able to get info from the crop duster, from the farmers, you know, know thy subject, as uh, many photographers exactly. quote. And so that's a great opportunity. But I, I tell you, it's just amazing. Every time I'm out here, it, you know, it's peaceful, and that helps. Living in New York City, coming out here is a special kind of benefit. I wish we could show this, because as far as the eye can oh, see, yeah. there's just nothing but farmland. Oh, yeah, it's a, and it's around about 3,000 square miles. We're about 3,500 feet up here. Yeah, this, right up here on top of Steptoe Butte, we're about 1,000 feet above the average elevation down below. So it gives you a wonderful perspective and a really a sense of just how vast this is. I mean, as far as the eye can see to the south, as far as you can see out to the west, out to the east, we got Idaho, so there's some hills and mountains over there where it ends, just going into Idaho. But it's, just, it's a huge and area. The, the, yeah, the Palouse is not just here in Washington. It covers a much broader area than that. Right. It does go into Idaho a little bit, right. the Panhandle, but all the way down to the Snake River, uh, up pretty close to Spokane. It is a big area. You started to explain, uh, to the best of your ability, what Palouse or how it got the name Palouse. It, yeah, yeah, there's uh, some, we've gotten different stories over the years, so I'm sure it's kind of a uh, combination. So the there were Native Americans, uh, tribes out here, there was a tribe that was called the Palouse, but of course many of those Native American tribes, they were named, yeah. yeah exactly, named by us so to speak, uh, based on maybe an interpretation of the name they called themselves. Uh, my understanding is that there was a rock that was considered sacred and that was called, I don't know the pronunciation precisely, but P-A-L-U-S I believe is the spelling, Palos, and so that's a variation mm -hmm. on that, but also the word Palouse, I'm told, in French means uh, something effective uh, 
grasslands, low-level grassland. And this was a grassy area. And we get a lot of questions from photographers about, you know, farmers chopping down trees to make way for crops. <laughs> I don't and think there were any trees. No, very Maybe few trees. Millennia ago. But Certainly many have been planted since in a lot of the towns. And then they'll grow along the creeks and streams and rivers. But just not that many uh, uh, trees out here. And it's mostly, you know, very interesting as well. This area was carved out by glaciers. We've got a basalt base, volcanic base. And what we see here, they sure look like sand dunes because essentially they are sand like, dunes. Yeah, rolling hills. Yeah, this is blown in by winds. And so it's a very silty soil, but it's wonderful topsoil. It'll be, you know, 100 feet or more deep in areas. Very, very fertile. So it's very productive land. But it literally is sand dunes of topsoil, essentially, that they're farming. And it's just uh, spectacular and amazing. And I'm going to give a big photo bug thumbs up to <laughs> Tim's workshop. I believe this is the second workshop I've been with you. Second or third? Yeah. I can't remember. And Tim always goes out of his way to explain, help people out. He's not just here taking his pictures. Right. Poor guy has, I think he hardly <laughs> used his camera. So I'm going to put, again, the links in here sure. and urge everybody out also to subscribe to your newsletter. And you, aren't you doing a podcast or you have videos now that you're... Primarily videos, doing? yes, through the Great Learning website. But, you know, you can sign up for the Ask Tim Gray email if you don't mind an email every day. Uh, yeah, I don't know how he finds time to do it. We've said that before. <laughs> but uh, Yeah, it's a question and answer email. Email, so I try to answer a question every weekday from a photographer on a wide variety of subjects related to photography, and that's free to receive if you don't mind the email. There's a weekly digest version of it that we started up a while yeah. back for those who'd rather have it just once I like a week. Daily. I, yeah, I, you know, it's funny. I always thought daily is too much. People are tired of getting email, and whenever I go to an event and talk to photographers and say that I'm thinking about just making it weekly, they say, "No, no, no. That's how I, you know, drink my coffee and read the, the news in the morning." That's is, right. You know, with checking out the question and answer for the day first and foremost. So. And this isn't the only workshop you do. You have uh, True. additional workshops as we, well. Yeah, so we've been doing the Palouse for about 10 years now. Now that I'm living in New York City for about, I think it's been eight years now. We started a few years ago. Coast of Seattle to <laughs> New York City. <laughs> Long drive. But uh, so we have New York City photo workshops. We've done Rome the last few years. I think we might next year do an Austria workshop. We had done Austria maybe about five years ago after I'd been making lots Sarah, and Sarah lots Gould. of trips. It is, oh my goodness, <laughs> a like, beautiful like country. Austria. Yes. Yeah, it's a beautiful country. Beautiful people. So, yeah, I think for 2019, we've got Palouse, New York City, Rome, and Austria, I believe, is probably going to be on the, on the table. So go check it out. Like I said, you wouldn't, you're wouldn't, you not going to be disappointed. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. <laughs> and it was also nice meeting your lovely wife. Oh, yes. So, she's a big help. Yeah, we should bring her in here, but I don't think she likes going in front she, of the She's the shy one there. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> well, Tim, thank you so much. Thank I you, Jim. I appreciate it. Pleasure. And we will have you back. Excellent. Bye. Look forward to it.
Hey, thanks for tuning in to the new YouTube Photobug channel. And we hope that you're going to subscribe. So click on the subscribe button down there. That's right. And if you want to be notified ahead of time when we have a new feature coming up, click on the bell. And finally, while you're at it, how about giving us a thumbs up?